cross my fingers and hope that this works. I did this once, maybe twice before. Not endorsing this particular brand of coring tool that I have. Mine is a woodcut. I'm sorry, woodcut. Uh, I understand that McNaughton makes a pretty good one. Uh, one Way makes a, a good coring tool. The only reason that I came about this particular brand was that a member of the Columbus Club was selling it. It was brand new in a box. The Cosmoline was still on it. And he said I could have it for $50. They cost $499.99 plus tax and shipping from Packard Woodworks. Sat in a box for two years. I didn't wipe the Cosmoline off of it until one day I was going to do a demo at the club I started in Ashtabula, so we took it out of the box and we gave it a try, me and uh, Joe Herman. And it worked pretty good. And so I'm not going to put it down, but I'm not going to put any other coring tool down either. Again, the only reason that I have this one is because of the price I got it for. But I did try it, um, oh, I don't know, a, m a month or so ago, and uh, it worked. Now, this particular uh, coring tool has two different cutter, cutting uh, blades on it. And I, when I did do this, I was able to get three bowls out of one blank. Uh, it's a whole lot better than having all those wasted shavings on the ground. And uh, I have sold nested bowls before that I did not core out. Uh, I had somebody else core them, and, and they sell very well. Uh, you can, people get three or four bowls out of, you know, the one inside the other, and they just buy them right up. So uh, it was a lot of waste when we do turn bowls. Uh, there's a lot of waste on the floor. So nothing goes to waste. And... Uh, now i found a way of not wasting all those shavings when I make a bowl. So, first thing we're going to have to do is put a tenon on here, but whenever I knock it off the bark on something, I wear a face shield. And all I'm going to do is just roughly shape the outside of the bowl. And it's more so so that I can put a tenon on it than anything else. As far as the other uh, our, uh, coring systems that are available, uh, I've never even tried them. So I cannot say one is any better than another one, or I just go by what people tell me. And truthfully, until I came across this one, I had never even heard of it. I know a lot of people say that it's not safe to wear a glove. Um, you guys remember when Jamie Donaldson was here? Uh, I hosted him, and he wears a glove all the time. And believe me, those chips, I mean, we all know they hurt when they hit, and some, they're, they're pretty hot sometimes. Um, and I, I believe, like, he did that as long as the glove is fits 
ใช้ I don't, I don't see any real danger in it. Uh, I don't care what you do. There's somebody that's going to say it's the worst thing in the world, and another person's going to say it can't hurt you. Regardless, um, I know you shouldn't have any loose clothing around the lathe, but. As long as it's not loose, I don't see any harm in it. I, I'm fortunate; I've never had any problem. Hopefully, I will never will. But I, I, I like this a whole lot. When I do my hats, I take off a half an inch at a time. If the tree fell yesterday, it's on my lathe today. That's how wet it is. I take off some pretty big cuts, and believe me, it can hurt. My uh, chuck that I have today is a Vic Mark, so it's a dovetail jaws. So I have to make sure my dovetail or my uh, tenon is dovetailed. Okay, hopefully that's going to fit. Uh, I'm fortunate in that I have several chucks and. I happen to have three Vicmark chucks. I think they're the finest chuck on the market. Um, they are expensive. The 120s are about $400, and the one 100s is a little bit smaller, about $300. Uh, but they're completely closed, sealed. I mean. She came up and loosened it up when nobody was looking. Now, on this size of ball, I'm going to guess we're probably only going to get two. I'll try a third if we can, but if we do, it's going to be a very small, like, finger ball. But, uh,. My question was, when I, I saw this demo with this particular brand of coring tool in Columbus, and after it was all over, I asked him, I said, why can't you core out the center one first and then go to the next one up and core that one out? And he didn't have an answer. And... Then when I did this demo at the club in Ashtabula, somebody asked me and I told them I didn't know. But when I think about it, it'll take me a little bit to figure it out. There was a reason that you can't do it first. There we go. That's it. Thank you. That's good. It'll... All right. See how true. Always turn your speed down before you turn it on because you never know what's going to happen. It's not too bad. All right, they say that your bowl should be about, the wall should be about 10% of whatever the diameter is. This is close to 10 inches, so that's about an inch. And there's no rocket science. Come on, guys, you guys are have dried enough bowls that I'm sure you know <laughs> doesn't have to be exact. But we're going to draw at approximately one inch. If nothing else, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> Again, like I said, I, I normally, I would have done all of this before I ever came here, but I didn't, so, but the last time I did this, I, this particular one comes with two different size cutters. 
I understand that there is a larger coring tool. It comes with three different cutters. Um, I don't know if the base, I'm going to check with them, the, the, the true cut or wood cut, and see if the base is the same size. And if it is, then I'll probably get the other cutter. But if it's not, if it's a bigger base, then I'm certainly not going to buy the cutter just for that, or the base for that one cutter. Now, I did learn something the hard way. Whenever you do start to do any cutting, make sure everything is tight. And I do mean everything. <laughs> uh, if it's not, you're going to wish it had been. All right, again, I'm just going to about approximately one inch. It's close enough to one inch to me. Now, they, they say, and I, again, I don't know, they gave me some templates on paper, told me to cut them out, and then cut some masonite or whatever to, you know, and glue it on there to see where to set this up at. Uh, I made my own. Uh, it's supposed to be, this is the back of the bowl, and this is where the pin should be. Don't ask me why. That's what the instructions said. So, from what I understand, all this is for is for how far this pin should be away from the back of the ball to have the depth right. It should be at about center height, yes. This is set up for my Powermatic at home, and I'll have to set it up for this lathe once I... You don't make a tenon, you make a recess on this side of the bowl. If you're going to get two or three, maybe four bowls out of a blank, you want to put a recess on this, yeah, this side of the bowl. And uh, your chuck will fit on it. So then when we core this out, I already have the recess made to turn it around, put it back on the chuck to create a neck, another tenon for the next ball coming out. All right? Now, I did the one I did do at home. I got three bowls out of it, so I did have a recess on the front. I got one bowl out. I turned it around, put another tenon on the back of it, turned it back around, and cored that one out, and it worked fine. Again, here we're only going to get two. It's a small blank. Okay, now, if I was going to do more than two bowls out of a blank, then Isabel brought up a good point. I would have a recess on the front here, okay? So I only have to do one recess. I would core. It would be, in this, uh, if it was a bigger blank, it would be the, what, the second bowl. I would be coring out. I already have the recess in it. I could turn it around on the chuck, mount it in the recess, Put another tenon on the bottom of that, take it off, turn it around, mount the tenon in it, and then core that out. All right? I'm only going to core one bowl out of this. There's going to be two bowls. So I don't need the recess on this side. I mean, I could put it there if I wanted to. What's the difference? I got the hole for the screw chuck. If I'm going to, you know finish off the bottom, put a tenon on this second ball, I'll just use the screw chuck again. I have to go down to about center anyway, so let's just do it now and get it over with. Yes, the cutter should be at the center line. We are at center. And again, it does, it's not rocket science. You know? <laughs> if it's not exact, it's not. This particular design I, I d didn't care for, I mean, because the tail stock has to be up here to hold this. And all this is for is tail stock, just supports the back end of this. Now, the idea behind this with these two different cutters is if I, if I was going to get three balls out of it, I would use the larger cutter for the first both set of balls. And when I remount it, I would switch the blades and get the smaller ball out. Okay, supposedly everything is there. That's good. Okay, everything is tight. So, I guess we're ready to cut. 
RPM, I would do about four to five hundred. I don't have a digital readout on this. Uh, I'm the way I'm reading this. It looks it's like it's about seven fifty, if these dials are correct. All right, now all we need to do is start feeding, and once it starts. It does make a lot of noise, so it would probably be a good idea to wear ear protection. Does anybody here have a coring system at home? What kind do you have? Do you, I, I understand that not is a lot of work to set up, or so is this, right? Uh, I heard it was more versatile, but Joe Herman is the one that told me, said, man, it's a lot of work to set up. Of course, again, like I said, this was a lot of work to set up. At home, I do wear earplugs when I do this. Um, and again, I only did it once in my house, and then once at... Uh, uh, the Ashtabula Club is a demo. It's a good idea to back off once in a while to clear out your shavings, and if you have to, come all the way out. The other thing, I, I do not know how wet this ball is. Uh, it is a good idea to do this on green wood. Not so much dry wood. Uh, I mean, that's the idea of this is to, to core them out and let them dry so you can do a finished bowl six or eight months later. It does save a lot of shavings and you're not wasting a lot of product. You can tell from the sound of it, we're not too far away and this bowl is getting right now. Uh, I use a different type of coring tool when I do the core out the center of my hats when I'm hollowing it out. I get it to a certain point and I just wrap it with a hammer and it just breaks off. And we could probably do the same thing here. And it's about ready to go. Yep. There it is. I got a feeling this is this wood might have been just a little bit too dry because I mean it was burnishing and, and this is all burnt. Doesn't matter, it's gonna be returned. But and this is too small to get another ball out of. But see now if I had a recess, if I had if this was a bigger blank and I was gonna get three or four out of it, if I had a recess on this, okay, this would have been the second bowl in line. If I had a recess on this, I could turn it around and hold it very easily, put another tenon on it, turn it around again, and hollow out another one. And just keep going till I have nothing left. All right? Like I said, in this particular case, this one is too small, and we couldn't have gotten more than two bowls out of it anyway. The one that I, I, I did do at home when I was practicing and so forth, I got three out of it. I'm not going to make another ball out of this. This is to be set quarter now to dry. It's got a tenon on it, just like any other ball. Put my tail stock up there, true it up, turn it around, mount it. Just like I would do any other ball if I was finishing it. When I go to retrue this, to return it, it's been sitting in the corner for six or eight months, it's warped. This is the way I do it, just like that. Right up against those jaws, bring my tail stock up, put it on my center mark, all right, and true up the tenon. Turn the outside of the bowl, get it as true as I can, or whatever shape I want to do it, then turn it around, put it back in here, and finish the inside. Again, like I say, this is a small blank, so we're only going to get two bowls, but this one here, if I had the recess, I would just put it on the chuck, finish up the outside. 
I don't have the recess. I have the screw chuck. So I would just use the screw again. I would finish up the outside of my bowl when it's dry, put a tenon on it, turn it around, finish out the inside. And then these two bowls would be a set of nested bowls. And then I found out that there is another one that's a bigger cutter yet, uh, because the bowl that I did do, three of them, it was really too big for this system, to be honest with you, in my opinion. Uh, but I, uh, I, again, if, if I can use the same base, but I kind of doubt it, and a third cutter, I'm, I'm going to think that there's another, it would have to be. It has to be a different base. The, the ones that I did get three balls out of, I'm happy with them. The outer ball is probably 12, 13 inches, then maybe a 10, and then a, an 8 or something. I'm told just to sharpen the top. Just take a, a, a diamond card across the top, period, the end. Um, the guy that demonstrated it at uh, the Columbus Club, and I just talked to him last month when I was there for the meeting, uh, he said somebody tried to grind the edges, and he said now he has to buy new cutters. They're just shot. He bought his used, and eh, he paid like 200 bucks for it used. Um, so he said if you do sharpen them, and, and I did read that also, but it said just use a diamond card across the top. And most of your carbide tools, that's the way you sharpen them. Turn the little cutter upside down on a stone, clean up the top a little bit, ready to go. This, this bowl will be all warped in a year or so. What I do is I mount it just the way Ron did. But I turn a new, what I call, spigot, where I can put expanding extended jaws in. So now I've got a true spigot, which will be true to the back side. Finish all of this, turn it around, and finish the inside. You understand that? Yeah. I, I cut a spigot on the inside for expanding jaws. Instead of the way Ron does it, where he puts it against the chuck, uh, which in my view, because the bowl is not round anymore, is not a stable uh, fastening. George's bowls are very nice. So, I mean, the way he's talking about it, obviously it works well for him. Thanks, Ron. Okay. Thank you very much.